Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today we kind of have uh, alternative analysis, as the FEPE manuals uh, call it. Uh, this is an engineering economics problem. And uh, here's what the question says. A local city must make an assessment about the feasibility of repairing a bridge. Uh, the estimated useful life of the bridge is 25 years. The MARR, which is the minimal acceptance rate of return, is 7%. Uh, the relevant cost estimates are found in the table below in thousands of dollars. What is most nearly the benefit cost ratio of making repairs? And we see our four options available to us in decimals. Uh, and then we kind of see a chart that it gives us. It gives us the initial cost of uh, fixing uh, the bridge that we have. So we have an existing. If we don't want to uh, repair it, right? And then if we do repair it, it's going to be 80K uh, straight off, you know, straight off the bat. Uh, whereas if we delay it, the annual cost from year 1 to 15, it's going to cost 11K. Whereas if we repair it, 4,000. Uh, and then from years 15 to 25, 15,000 if we don't do anything now. Whereas if we repair it, um, you know, later down the road, it'd be 5,000 from uh, 15 to, from year 15 to 25. And then the salvage value of the bridge that we have now, if we don't repair it, is going to be 6,000. Whereas if we do repair it uh, at year 25, it's going to be uh, 20, uh, 21,000 is going to be the salvage value. So, all right. So uh, step number one is we need to find some reading material about the MARR or the benefit cost ratio, just something to get our uh, our feet wet here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look in the FE manual uh, and we're looking in the greatest, latest and greatest at the time of this video, it's going to be version 10.2. Right? And it's going to be in the engineering economics section, page 232. So I'm just going to write E N G E N or sorry, E C O N. I can spell here. C O N. All right, and that's uh, 232. So three. All right, and then for the PE, we're going to be looking in version 1.1. That's the latest and greatest at the time of this video. Uh, general engineering. So general ENG. That's right there. And uh, this is going to be section 1.7.9. So 1.7.9, or it's going to be page 39. Looking in that manual there, you're going to find it there. All right, uh, so basically let's explain. Let's walk through this problem. Let's make sure we're understanding what this is asking. Basically, the benefits cost, uh, basically what we're seeing is if it's worth it. Is it worth to repair it, or do we just let it go, or let it run its course, and then repair it at year 20, you know, or get a whole new bridge in year 25? Uh, and basically what it looks like is this. You're going to have a benefit minus cost. And that needs to be greater than or equal to zero in order for it to be worth it. So if there's more benefits than how it's going to, you know, than the how much it's going to cost, then it's worth it to go ahead and do it. Or in this case, it's asking for a ratio. So that would be the benefits over costs. And this needs to be greater than or equal to one. This makes sense. If you have more benefits than costs, it ends up being greater than one. Whereas if you have more costs, if it ends up costing more than what it will benefit, it ends up being less than one. So that's where that comes from. The MARR, if we're going to talk about that for a little bit, uh, it's the minimal acceptance rate of return. And basically what they're wanting is at least 7% return on investment. Anything less is unacceptable. And basically it's a no deal, right? Uh, and so we're going to run this with an MARR at 7%. So that's that's where that comes from. You can see all types of different problems with this, um, with the MARR. So basically the problem is asking, is this worth the effort to repair? Is it worth it to repair it, or do we just need to get a new bridge? Um, so basically, if we're going to break this down into benefits... And the cost, this is just how my brain works here. Uh, the benefits and the cost. So the benefits is the cheaper annual cost. This is annual cost. So take a look here. 
it ends up being cheaper to repair it here and here, right? Whereas it costs more for the initial costs and the salvage value, uh, that, that ends up going into the cost as well. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and talk about that now. The cost is going to be the initial value or initial cost, sorry, initial cost minus the salvage value. That's how that works. And so when we, uh, when we run some math here, what we need to do is uh, we need to find the difference between year one and year 15. And, uh, and then we need to bring that into the present value and we can use this uh, benefit cost ratio. We just need to get it into similar forms basically. Whereas right now we've got an initial cost, so a present value, uh, or yeah, uh, we've got annual cost, which is that A. If you're looking in the engineering economic section, they call it A. They label it as A. Uh, and then we have a salvage value, a final, or, or a, a future value. And so we need to bring all that to the present value, future value, turn it into A, whatever you want to do. I'm going to put it into the uh, into the present. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to subtract the 11 minus 4 because this is how much we're going to save by doing this, right? So the 11 minus 4 ends up being 7. So that's $7,000 every year in savings. So the same thing with year 15 to 25. We're going to go ahead and subtract that. You end up with 10. Uh, all right, so now what we need to do is from years 1 to 15, we need to bring this to the present. So I'm going to write years 1 to 15. Uh, what we need to do is we need to take this seven. So remember our, our seven thousand dollars. Seven it might help to throw in a dollar sign here to picture it a little bit better. Uh, we need to use our tables. So there, there's actually tables that the manuals provide with you uh, to you. Sorry, uh, that that makes this a lot quicker. You can use the formula. It just gets sloppy. You can mess up the problem very easily. Uh, I highly encourage you use the tables. And I'm going to show you where those are at here in a minute. But here's kind of what the formula will look like uh, for this table. You end up with present value over A uh, for 15 years. Or 15 periods, I guess is how it's worded, for 7%. And so when you look at the table, by the way, this is where it's going to be. Guy here. Uh, you end up in FE in Engineering Economics. This is page... Uh, 235 to 236 is where you need to look. Now, the FE doesn't give us 7%. Uh, and, and don't get stop up, don't get messed up over this uh, because you can actually interpolate between 6 and 8 and actually get your 7%. So I encourage you to do that. I'm not going to walk you through that, but practice that uh, because they don't have to give you the 7% table whenever they give you this type of problem. They assume that you have the minimal competency to be able to do that and it could show up on the exam. Uh, so just FYI there and then for the PE uh, we're going to be looking in page 44. Okay. Uh, all right so when you saw when you go to that uh, that page there we're going to have seven times nine point one zero Got ahead of myself there. 9.1079. And this guy ends up being, I'm going to write it down here actually. It ends up being 63.755. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. And we're going to go from years 15 to 25 now. All right, so this one's going to be kind of unique, and we're in units of thousands, so keep that in mind here. That's why I'm able to write 7 and 10. Uh, it's not $7 or $10. It's 7000 and 10000 uh, And so what we need to do is we need to bring these annual returns or these annual costs, I guess, uh, to the front. We need to bring it to the present. And so what we're going to do is P over A uh, for 10 years because 25 minus 15 is 10 years. That's where that comes from. And then we have that 7% MARR that it wants us to solve for. However, the job's not done, right? And so if I'm going to draw a picture here, you start at year one, you're at year 25 here. Uh, you have the 7,000 all the way to year 15. Go ahead and pretend this is to scale here. Uh, and then we have 10,000, right? 
And so what we did is we took all of these annual uh, annual rates or costs, whatever it is, and we brought it to the present value for 10 years. Uh, but notice it, it doesn't send it to the front. It doesn't send it to year one. Whereas with this one, from years uh, one to 15, that actually brought it to year one. Well, we need to do the same thing with this year 15 to 25. Uh, and so that's that's what we need to do here. So we need to actually, what we solve for is that year 15, that's what this formula ends up giving us, but we need to actually bring it forward again. And so this year 15, if we're standing on year one, right, year 15 is a future value. So what we need to do is we need to convert that future value, if you're thinking of it that way, and bring it to the present value. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk us through here. We need to multiply... Uh, times the present value over the future value for uh, 15 years. Okay, so we're bringing it to year one right there at 7%. And so if we're looking in that uh, in that that table, that chart that it gives us, we have 10 times 7.0236 times times uh, 0.3624 and this guy ends up being 25.4535 all right so now what well we still got to calculate the cost we found the benefit portion that's what this is this is all benefits because we're saving money all right now we need to calculate the cost, which is the initial value minus the salvage value. And so I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to scroll down actually, and we'll we'll come back and picture it. But for the cost, what we need to do is uh, we need to take the initial value minus the salvage value. So this ends up being 80 minus zero, which is the difference up here. I'll, I'll scroll up here. It's a difference in initial costs, right? So let's say the existing initial cost was 10, you'd go 80 minus 10. So that's where we're at. And then we need to subtract 15 times P given F for 25 years over 7%. So that's where that comes from. And uh, this 15 right here, where did this come from, Cody? Well, it came from 21 minus 6. So the salvage values. That's the difference in the salvage values right here. So 21 minus 6, this ends up being 15, where that came from. And uh, and so when you solve for this, when you end up finding it in the uh, in the tables, you end up with 80 minus 15 times uh, 0 0.18, 0 0.1842, and this guy ends up being 77.237. So that's a 2. I'm going to rewrite that right here. All right, and so, hey, while well, I've got you here, if you've already enrolled in one of the review courses at civilengineeringacademy.com, keep it up. You can do this. If you haven't, I encourage you to go to civilengineeringacademy.com to check out some awesome practice exams and resources uh, that will help you pass your FE and PE exams the first time. So with that said, let's keep something in mind here, just a good teaching moment. The benefit over cost should be greater than or equal to one. That would mean it's good, right? It's a good investment to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and solve for what we got here. So B over C, I'm gonna go ahead and write short here. Uh, you end up with 63.755. That came from up here, uh, 63.755. That's right here, right? We just brought it down. And we need to add in the second part. So the years 15 to 25, this is going to be 25.4535. 4535. And to show you here, that came from right here. All right. Going down here. And then we need to bring that over the cost. Go ahead and throw that over the cost. The cost is going to be 75, or sorry, 77.237. And remember, this is in thousands of dollars, and so whenever you solve for this, you end up with something that looks a little bit like this, 
five. And so, yes, this would be a great investment to go ahead and repair the bridge. 1.15. That looks like it's D. All right. So I hope this video helps. I hope it clears up some things and we'll catch you next time.